Good morning everyone. Welcome to my third hike here on Guam. This one is going to be a solo hike to Sigua Falls. I parked just across the street here just before the entrance to Leo Palace which can be seen down the road and I'm going to start this hike which is going to be about five miles round trip uh, medium difficulty and you can see I'm going to start out by working my way through a muddy four-wheel drive track but I'm really excited to do this hike there's going to be a lot to see a lot of interesting things along the way leading to the highlight at the very end which will be Sigua Falls the road is right out there so I've just begun crossing over and hiking up this four-wheel drive road it's about seven o'clock in the morning getting an early start to avoid the hottest parts of the day. Immediate view up into the hills and the river valley off to the right. One of the things right from the start I'm seeing, it has not actually rained much here since I arrived on Guam, but this trail or four wheel drive road is still somewhat muddy. About three quarters of this route is exposed to sun without much shade. So I actually did bring my sun umbrella for probably for use on the hike back. It's still cool right now, but I know it's gonna be hot a little later. Plus I've got a gallon of liquids, which includes water and liquid IV, which is electrolytes. So, well prepared going into this hike. Navigating around areas of mud and water. I do really love this red soil that Guam's known for. It is really a standout feature on this hike. And I could imagine this would be a different type of challenge if I was hiking during the rainy season which is just about to start but hasn't I've only just started but look at this red mud that's caking on my shoes climbing some steep hills early on through this red four-wheel drive track and Already seeking out shade here at seven o'clock in the morning. Really feel that heat and humidity coming on quick. Navigation has been fairly easy to follow so far. There's a lot of crisscrossing four wheel drive tracks, but they kind of all keep meeting back at the same place. And I've already had to adjust my route several times to avoid giant mud pits. Nice view here. I'll zoom in, looking back toward the city and tourist resort area, some of the hotels. As you can see up ahead, the trail or road is kind of leading straight towards and to the right of Leo Palace Resort. As you can see right here, passing by a huge building here, Part of the Leo Palace, but there is no way to park there and just hop over to where I am, even though there's a road right up there, because it is private property and frowned upon. Got a swarm of butterflies right here. Been seeing them on all the Guam trails so far. This is about the one mile spot. Already done a mile and about Oh, the first 20, 25 minutes or so. I could definitely say this is the easier portion of the hike, except for the sun exposure. But coming up, the hike will get harder and my progress will slow down. You can see all the greenery and overgrown plants and brush just off to the side of the road. So the main road kind of continues this way, but I'm heading off on this smaller track because I can see my objective just ahead. The first objective for this hike. 
or point of interest. And actually, this is a marsh through here that I've got to cross over. It's to be hard to get through right here without getting wet. I'm going to skirt this side trail to the right. And oh, it's to even more marsh right here. It's going to be a tricky spot to get across. Just kind of pushing my way through this grass here. Trying to avoid getting totally submerged by mud and water. I'm just looking for a decent place to cross, which I haven't found yet. Managed to cross right here and not get too wet. My shoes did submerge a bit, but not past the area that is waterproofed. So now I can continue. Past the main part of the marsh, I've kind of been pushing my way through some wet plants and grass, getting my pant legs all wet, which doesn't matter. Oh, here's a toad or a frog right here. And right here, battling through some sword grass. Always a favorite pastime on Guam. And I've reconnected with the main trail. Might be able to find an easier way on the way back, but we'll see. This is a tank that's a remnant from World War II when the Battle of Guam took place between July and August of 1944. For three years, Guam had been occupied by invading Japanese forces, but the U.S. came in and retook Guam in the Battle of Guam. Quite an interesting piece of World War II history to see here along the trail. It's hard to believe that the Battle of Guam took place 80 years ago, and yet here I am as a hiker visiting this remnant of World War II, this tank that has been left in this area locally known as the Tank Farm, and it's just been left to rust under the harsh Guam climate. It's kind of neat that this has been left here and hikers like myself can come by and see this and think back to the history that took place here on the island. This tank is considered about the halfway point on the trail. It's a little over halfway in distance, but because the second half is so much harder, this is a good spot to call the halfway point. But from the tank, I'm gonna actually veer off the main road. I'm not gonna continue, but I'm gonna head in this direction. And right here, I can see where I'm gonna be going next. I'm going to head down this steep slope. You can see the trail. Now it's definitely a trail, not a four wheel drive track. Heading across, entering the jungle, and then climbing up the hillside on the, on the opposite side of the creek over there. So that's the next objective. 
somebody's actually dug out some steps heading down this section. And I can imagine why, because this is very steep, but also imagine somebody trying to do this during the rainy season. This would be borderline impassable without slipping and falling in slippery mud without these steps. Working my way down this first hill, dropping down. One of the things about the trail so far, it's been nearly 100% exposed to the sun. That will change a bit as I get into the jungle, but like right now, there's also a bit of a cool breeze out, which feels good. And the jungle will shut that down for the most part where you won't be able to feel the cool breeze. Instead, the heat will get trapped and it will just increase the humidity and be even hotter. Do so got some water flowing here at the bottom of the first drop. A little bit of a muddy creek to cross over. Not too bad. Climbing up the other side now. Trail's a bit overgrown, but not bad at all. Brush is about four feet high through some of these areas. And now we have another quick drop down, the second one in a row. And right here, this is the first appearance of a rope on the trail. You can actually see a pretty deep creek just below. As mentioned, a good amount of water down here. So how would I find the route through here? Somebody has built a bridge crossing right here. You can see I'm walking across it while holding on to roots of this tree. And then on the other side, easy crossing. Didn't have to get submerged or wet at all. Wow, this has been a grueling climb, dropping down and climbing back up twice to cross those two creeks. Really sweating. My shirt is totally soaked. Obviously I'm not <laughs> fully adjusted the humidity. I don't know if I ever would be, but despite all that, this is awesome. I really, really love hiking in the Pacific Ocean, the islands, I should say of the Pacific. And wow, this has been a great hike so far. Really, really enjoyable. There isn't a single other person out on trail today, by the way. It's just, uh, just me out here. This view is looking back. You can see all the way across the two ravines. I went down and came back up to the other side. Just beyond that far ridge is the tank farm. So it doesn't look like I've gone all that far, but it was challenging. This right here is probably going to be the last easy part of the hike kind of crossing a flat plateau. Jungle off to the left. Butterflies and the river valley off to the right. Somebody has marked the route with blue flags. And that's kind of been guiding the way since the tank farm. But one thing to keep in mind, conditions can change and you can't count on those being there when you hike. Might be different colored flags, might be no flags at all, but don't use this video as a, a guide for your hike because you don't know how conditions will change or how the trail will or will not be marked. Wonderful cool breeze blowing across this plateau. When that happens, I just like to stop and just let the cool air hit me and cool me off a little bit. Take a break from the sweltering humidity and heat. Right here, I have my first really good view of the river valley far below. Great viewpoint. I have to say, this has been 
a nice portion of the hike across this flat plateau area. Trail cutting through all the brush. Kind of just let my body cool down from the initial part exposed to the sun and then the two descent in a sense of those two creek areas or ravines. A little bit of a break here. This is one nice looking plant here with all these flowers on it. For the last few minutes or so, I've just been jumping once again on a four wheel drive road. Very rugged road. You can just imagine Jeeps passing through this area. But I can still clearly see I'm on the correct route because I see the blue flags. Easy to follow. Basically just heading downhill. What a view right here along the trail. See across to Leo Palace and then the steep canyon here, the river valley. I have to say this is incredible. Walked up to the end of this four wheel drive spur road and I can see Sigua Falls down below. Actually quite a bit more water than I was expecting here at the end of the dry season. Can't wait to get down there and check it out in person. As mentioned, I'm quite stunned here at this viewpoint. I was not expecting the waterfall to have this much water just because in watching the weather leading up to my Guam trip, I hadn't seen a lot of rain happening and we're here at the end of the dry season, almost the beginning of the wet season. So to see that much water coming down the falls from up here really gets me excited about what it's going to look like down up and close. Now, of course, begins what is known as the hardest part of the hike to reach. Sigua Falls and involves a rapid descent down to the river with some steep sections and ropes ahead. Right here, the first of the rope assists when heading down. Trail actually cuts around to the left here, but you can see this rope is there. Probably be using it in a couple minutes. This is a very thick rope. It's like people here are very serious about safety when coming down this. Again, probably a little bit easier for me today because it's dry, but this would be a slippery, muddy mess when wet. Here's the view as I descend through the jungle. I don't consider this to be that bad at all, but again, it's dry here. I can see the water below. It looks so refreshing and inviting. Just carefully climbing down. What an awesome ending to this hike. Holding on to anything I can on the way down to slow the descent. This is very steep. Imagine it's gonna be really hard coming back up later. I've made it. As you can see, I made it down here to Sigua Falls. This is a truly breathtaking area. To think there's such a beautiful waterfall here that comes down. Granted, it's quite hard to get to, probably too challenging for most people, but hikers with good route finding ability and those that can handle the heat and humidity can make it here. And 
I'm just overwhelmed by the beauty. Such a beautiful waterfall here on Guam. And to think also that I have it all to myself for the morning. It took me exactly two hours to get here from where I parked. Really cool spot here. I was able to scramble up on this ledge carefully. Some slippery rock and some moss, but I carefully walked over to the edge here to check out the middle of the waterfall. Very beautiful. Sigua Falls for about an hour, had it all to myself. And what's neat is not only is this a solo hike, because it's a little bit of an adventure hike, not fitting for probably most families, but there's no other hikers out and about today. It's a Monday morning here on Guam. No doubt locals are probably at work, but it's kind of neat to think that I'm the only person in the whole world that gets to enjoy this waterfall here on Guam on this particular day. Truly beautiful experience. I'm going to go ahead and begin the steep climb back up right now. This is honestly a little bit of a sad moment here. To leave such a beautiful place behind. I made it back here to the tank. Actually made quick progress coming back from the waterfall. And now I've got to cross this vast open area. Bit of cloud cover right now, but I think for most of the walk back, I'm going to be using this sunbrella. You can see it blowing in the wind a little bit. So I've got some cool wind. I have as much shade as I want. And I'm going to go ahead and hike back. And just one thing to add as I'm heading back out of this hike. I actually took a little bit of a different way back. I was following some blue and pink flags and it brought me to this bridge crossing. So this totally avoids the marsh. 
The new way I took was quite a bit more overgrown, but just to completely avoid the marsh is worth it. And just for the sake of future hikers that might be watching this video, when you see that pole in the distance, right in the middle, standing tall, you can't miss it as you're hiking down the road. And then you come to right here in the road, see there's a fork, but right here is where you want to turn off to the right. And for now, there's a couple blue flags here, but this is the route that avoids the marsh. I hope those last couple tips helped for anyone doing this hike, but I'm going to wrap things up now. And thanks so much for watching this video. And I'll see you back with part four of Hiking Guam. Take care. <laughs>